the only time I felt like that was with national television. Mm. Getting on the national television, getting on the Jimmy Kimmels and the Jimmy right, Fallons and da da No matter what I do, right? No matter who I got on the record, no matter how viral it goes, no matter how positive it is, if it doesn't have a curse word, it's a positive message. For some reason, I am unable to get that look. And I do not know why. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, Woo! ladies and gentlemen. I've been waiting on this one. Joiner Lucas hey. in the neighborhood. Joiner Lucas, welcome to the neighborhood, brother. I appreciate you. Man, I appreciate you coming into the neighborhood, man. I would say that you are one of the most, I would say, in the business, out of the business, dropping the most hardest mother efforts, period. I appreciate mm. it. And I'm going to tell you, man, anytime I hear you go, Joyner, and it's not because you're here, because we've had this conversation in the neighborhood a lot. Yeah. I've never heard you get lazy. Wow, I appreciate it. You talking about the pen? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't been around you to see if you're lazy at oh, the yeah. house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, you you never lazy on your pen, bro. Is that extremely important to you? Yeah, for sure. Why yeah. so? Why so? Because we it's times, bro, that we in like like we at one point we were in, in a real goofy area. Mm -hmm. It's not as goofy right now. Mm -hmm. And then there's sometimes, and I said it to the neighborhood as well. I've said, man. There's some people, and, and this I've said this with your name on it, that feel like they work harder. Mm. And sometimes, I'm not saying, oh, y'all work too hard, but there's so much that it feels like you put into a song, not even the visuals, that I just feel like, man, the world should be paying way more attention to it. Mm. You know, so when you sit down to write, is it in your head or that's just you that, man, this is the way I come? Yeah, pause on on this way I come, but right, right, right. <laughs> um, I think that is really the the beat that brings me to where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Right when I hear a beat, you know, and it's like depending on the beat, then I come with the concept and all that. But um, I the music lives forever, right? right? So you can't be lazy on the pen because right. it's gonna live forever. So it's like people are gonna listen to it forever, literally. So mm -hmm. it's like you know, it's important what I do on the on the mic. Pause. Oh, because you, you gonna have me, you gonna have me pausing myself <laughs> through this whole interview. You listen to ten, you know, you listen five, ten, fifteen, twenty years from now. It's like you, are, you, you want to make sure when people hear it, you know, they're mm -hmm. like, oh, he got busy. You, do know you ever I mean? get? Do you ever have a uh, position where you feel like you get in your own way sometimes, though? What you mean? Like, are you critical to Jordan Lucas music before the world is critical, or do you feel like you're sometimes nah, you're super, too critical? Yeah, I'm, I'm super critical. Like sometimes right. I was. Like, I'll, I'll create, um, I'll spend, like, sometimes I'll spend, like, weeks creating a record, and then, like, I go to record it, and it just doesn't, it don't, it ain't what I thought it was going to be, and I just won't put it out. Or I've been, there's been times that I've created records, and I've shot music videos to it yeah. with, you know, hundred two hundred thousand dollars budgets, and then just scrap the whole yeah. joint just because... It just wasn't, the, the vision didn't come together the way that I thought it was going to. Because you'll also mm -hmm. present something and pretty much bring it down as well or or pull pull, pull back yourself. Yep. Damn. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, I think when you're creative, you know, it's extremely important how you broadcast your, you know, your stuff to the world, you know, because it's going to live forever. And then we're in a social media era, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like. Everything lives forever right. at this point. So it's like it's, it's crucial that you think about what you're going to do before you do it and you, you know, you execute it in the way that it's supposed to be executed. How much do you do? Do you pay attention to social media? Good um, and bad? I, I, I stopped a couple years right. ago. Why? Um, just because I feel like the energy on social media is like it's a place where there's a lot of negative energy on mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? It's a lot of opinions. It's a lot of, you know, it's a, it's just a lot of negative energy. So it's like rather than um, have my my energy disturbed by seeing something, I'm not even talking about things about me. I'm just period. speaking about period, right? Mm -hmm. Like on social media, you know, you hop on, you know, Instagram or Facebook and you see like a dog getting slaughtered or you see like a baby getting hit by a car. Just like people sharing random yeah. shit and talking about things that are like sensitive and it's like, you know, 
it can it can really fuck my whole day up. You know, hey, what I'm dude, saying? I tell yeah. the team as well. I say, don't bring it to me. Yeah, because there's sometimes, bro. A lot of times on social mm -hmm. media, it can change your energy. Mm -hmm. Even if you think it's not going to change your energy, right. you know, it can, it could change your energy, and that's why I just yeah. tell people sometimes. I'm like, man, just don't bring it to me. Yeah, energy is a real thing, and I and I think that a lot of people don't realize that. You know what you what you're seeing on social media, or what you know. It's like that. You wake up and the first thing people do is they hop on their phone. Yep, grab it, grab the device. Right, I, I'm guilty of that. Right, mm -hmm. I do the same thing, and it's like I'll see something on there that could, it could really like rub my energy the wrong way. Right, and then and now I got an energy with me that I'm carrying throughout the day, and it's like I'm, I gotta hang with my kids, and then that yeah. energy can rub off on them, and it's just like I just, I don't know. So I started to be mindful and conscious of that. Yeah, you know I, I mean? I'm, I'm about to go on another social media detox, bro. And it's just sometimes I need it. Like, I'm a, I'm a dad. My son has just turned 17. My daughter's 15. Yeah. There's times, Joyner, man, I wish I didn't give them the device because yeah. I didn't have it. So I know life with it and without it, yeah. and I know how different things are, mm -hmm. and I know what how, how much time we put into that now. And I look at my daughter, and I'm like, like, damn, you know, my and, and you know, people, my daughter has, like, anxiety. Not crazy bad right now, yeah. but I just wonder sometimes, like, is that because of the device and, you know, looking at it, you know, my kid, people would look at it all day. I remember working in the radio when we didn't have it. Yeah. We had to go downstairs and get the newspaper. You had to do this. And now everything is right here in front of you. I think that, so there's, there's, um, there's a good and a bad, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what anything yeah. in life, right? But the irony of all of this is that it's because of social media that I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's the good in it for me. It's like social media changed my life. Yeah. It made it so that I didn't need certain things, right? I, I went straight to the people. I, I was able to reach, just go straight to the fans myself and not have to depend on, you know, an entity to do that for yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's, 100. That's the beautiful part about social media. Yeah. But the bad part about social media is what we were talking about with the energy. Um, social media destroys relationships. Mm-hmm. Literally, right? It's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse, right? Yeah. You got everything at the at at the the palm of your hand. Social media makes people be lazy, mm -hmm. right? Because you have all these apps and you have all these yeah. different things now. You can Google outside now, you right? Know what I'm <laughs> like just like, oh, I'm outside. But what's the interesting thing is too with social media is before you didn't you couldn't really see how anybody else was living, right? Mm -hmm. You had to go to these places, right? You had to go on vacation. You had to go to people's houses. You had to, to really see. Yeah. Now it's like you see how everybody's living. Yeah. You can really see the world. And it's a good thing yeah. and it's a bad thing. There, there's yeah. certain people that I could just check on that mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have checked on in years. Like I could literally sit up and say, oh, I wonder where such and such is at. Right. And, and I, like, I'm a hip-hop head, so I'll check in and see, oh, man, they still moving. Right. There's some people that you probably would have said, oh, man, they fell off, but they somewhere in the world touring. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or like even like a Plies. I don't see Plies every day, mm -hmm. but you see Plies is active. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So with that, it's the gift and the curse. And so when you were speaking on, you know, you knew how to use – Social media had helped you. Right. And it got you right to the people. Right. Back in the days, bro, and, and you'll see where I'm going with this. People wanted to be on, oh, I gotta be on Def Jam. Mm -hmm. Or I gotta be on Atlantic. I was at I, I got yeah, I gotta be on such and such. Mm -hmm. And now it's like sometimes you don't even want to be a part of that. I was that guy, you know, but that's during the era that I came up, there was no social media. Mm -hmm. Social media is new. Right. It's right. like about 10 right. to something years old, right? That's a Started with the MySpace, you know, all mm -hmm. that things like that. That was what, like 15 years ago? Yeah. Uh, my and especially the way it is right now, Right under 20, though. yeah. Right under 20, like, right? In the last 10 years, right. because I wrote my book probably over 10 years ago. Right. I had Twitter. Right. We didn't have, like, Instagram. Like, my book would have been even better more as, as far as successful yeah. if I had that tool. Yeah. So you're talking about pre where we were just... We didn't have, we, exactly, we didn't have those resources. Yeah. Right? And it's like, you know, you had to depend on the label in order to get mm -hmm. the music out, right? They were the gatekeepers. And it's like now, you know, you can go straight, like, to the demographic, right? And a lot of artists are successful now because of that. And they're able to maintain their independence, yeah. such as myself. Because, it's, you know, you go straight to the people. Right. And you don't need a label at this point, right? And you control your blood, sweat, and your tears now. Before I became independent, right, it was like, 
my dream was to be on a label because in the era that I grew up in, everybody was signed. And then mm-hmm. you weren't shit until you were signed. So yeah. if you were signed to um, Atlantic or if you were signed to Universal or Def Jam, and then you had the branches underneath them, the Bad Boys, and you mm-hmm. had the you know, Def Rose, and you had the, the So So Deaths and all that, right? And everybody was... It was like NBA teams, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like you wanted to be you. If you're a ball player, your dream is to become yeah. a big NBA, right? And it's, it's your marquee and it's your banner, right? That's such and such signed to, you know. And at one point, we used to think, "Oh man, well he's an independent artist," mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Oh, he mm-hmm. can't get on on a major, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? No majors messing with him. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, now if you are independent, I think pe- more people are aware now of, um. The, the sham. That's what I like to call mm. it. You know, the 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 label sham. Yeah, you know what man. I'm saying? Of what it what it is. You know, I think well because of social media now, more people talk about it. More artists are open. You know about that concept of them being screwed out of millions of dollars. You know, before when TLC mm-hmm. was getting screwed out of a million dollars, they had to go. You know, you remember when T Boz and Chili and Left Eye was they was they was on. Um, an award, what was it, award show or something? That oh, they, and, and they said it? And they said mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Right? Before that, nobody had any idea that they was getting screwed out of a million right. dollars, right? Now, if you're getting screwed out of a million dollars, you could just send a tweet and the whole world is going to know. Oh, yeah, instantly. <laughs> instantly, instantly right? bro. And, and, and <laughs> down to the point we started That's chanting, it. let my people go. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when we talk about the gift and the curse and right. just how the business has changed, right. and you've been a person, bro, right. that everything, not everything, but most Almost everything that I've seen from you, I didn't think, man, what label is Joyner on? Mm. Who's representing him? Like, mm. like you will put up something, and I would see lyrically amazing, visually amazing. So I would see you from you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like there was a label or a rep or anything like that. Yeah. It was just. But that's but but that also stemmed from me wanting that or wanting some type of help or me mm, wanting right. someone to stand behind me, pause, or me wanting like, <laughs> 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 or, or, you know, me wanting support, right? A support mm-hmm. system, yeah. right? Because again, that's what you see when you're growing up. You Everybody see all these artists, had they had they had the support, they had the machine. The lit. So it was like me desperately wanting that. So it was like, you know, I was doing any and everything that I could possibly do to try to get that support mm-hmm. that I never got up until recently, right? And it was... What is that like, man? And and not on being yeah. braggadocious or egotistical, but what is it to know you're better than that person? Or, you know, and, and that, that like sounds low-key. Yeah, but just knowing, like... And not even looking at somebody else's success and saying that should be mine, but looking at something and saying, man, how am I not in and how do you not get bitter or how do you not say, man, F this game? Well, I think that when you hold yourself accountable, Mm. right, it's like there's not, you don't got people sitting there saying we're going to keep Joyner out. Right. Okay. (laughs) Right. When you understand that it doesn't work like that, right? There's not a group of people saying, look, we're going to keep him out. You know, he's not the guy. Let's put this guy in front of him. Right. Let's do, right? You never thought that? No. Okay. Right? It's like, I don't feel like people have it out for me, right? I don't feel like I said anything that blackballed right, right, right. myself to where now Big Boy doesn't want to do my interview and that, you know, um, the only, the only the only time I felt like that was with national television. Mm. Getting on the national television, getting on the Jimmy Kimmels and the Jimmy right, Fallon's and then right. no matter what I do, right? No matter who I got on the record, no matter how viral it goes, no matter how positive it is, if it doesn't have a curse word, it's a positive message. For some reason, I am unable to get that look. And I do not know why, right? And still. Still, right? Don't know why, right? Best for me, you know, uh, the record I have right now with Jelly Roll. Yeah. You know, big record, crazy on, the, you know, the iTunes charts, you know. Um, got Jelly Roll on it, who's the biggest, one of the biggest artists in the world right now. Yes, sir. You know, album comes out, not now, I'm busy, goes crazy right now, still holding up on the chart. Nothing, right? And it's like, 
why? Right? right. Who's in who who's standing in the way of that? And why is this these and there's really no answer, right? It's like I dropped the Will record when, yeah. the, when Will came out. Amazing. He was willing to do the shit. Nothing, right? Dropped Broski, which was yeah. that record was really powerful and strong. And I wanted to perform that so bad on Fallon or Kemo or any of these shows, right? Nothing. Couldn't get the look. And it's like, why? Right? What is it? What's the reason I can't get that look? Right? Well, who's standing in front? Who's saying, like, what is the reason? Right. What, what's the reason? I don't know. To this day, I have no idea. But that's the one thing I haven't been able to tap into. Right? That I haven't been able to cut into that. I done been in movies. I done, yeah. you know, I done got broke that ground. Right? I'm Bad Boys Four. You know, that's coming out soon. Congratulations. Shout out to Will. Uh, family playing Mark Wahlberg, right? I didn't did I didn't did things. I'm acting in the music videos. You know, I'm selling out shows. I'm performing. I'm cool. What did I say or what did I do to where I'm? I can't perform on national television or be a part of these. That's the one look that I can't get, and that's the only time I ever said, right. "Why? Like, what's the what what what's the who's gatekeeping that and why can't I get that look?" Right, and that's and I've been feeling like that for the last four years, five years, right? Like. Because I put out a lot of things in those yeah. years that, you know. And the crazy. ones that you were probably thinking, and not that it's because, but yeah. I'm pretty sure you're thinking like, oh, yeah, this is the one. A hundred percent. And then there's, and then what really blows my mind, pause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It's her, man. Yeah, she, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, and she's hey, been yeah. waiting on you to get here, too. Oh, yeah. hey, you know, yo. they, they told us, you did, our producer came on and he was like, oh, yeah, Jordan Lucas. And she thought you, was, you had canceled. Oh, my God. And then it was like, oh, he's 10 minutes away. She's like, oh. No, 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 I'm in. But so, go, go ahead, family. So what really, like, confuses me is this is the only time I ever do this is when I see artists, right, that don't have the platform. Right? They don't have the seven to six million, you know, YouTube subscribers. Mm -hmm. They don't have the three million Instagram followers. They don't got the five million Facebook followers. They don't got the eight million Spotify, you know, monthly listeners. They don't have all the shit that I built up. Some of these niggas got 30,000, you know, uh, Spotify listeners a month. Mm -hmm. But you doing, how's he getting on camera? Right. How is this motherfucker? What? How? How come yeah. I? Right. That's the only thing. I'm just being honest. And that's I don't real. never be counting nobody's pockets. I don't never be saying, oh, why am I? Da, 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 da. I never do that. But in this instance, I've been, bro, I done gave these niggas layups, right? It's like, bro, what the fuck? And I'm seeing cats that are not even nowhere near the stratosphere that I am on, right? As far as like just the content, the music, the popularity, the features, whatever, whatever, whatever. The charts, the streaming, the sales, you know? Yeah, it's like, the bro, talent. the talent. How has this nigga got motherfucking 40,000 monthly listeners, you know, 100,000 Instagram followers, you know, damn near no YouTube subscribers, but this motherfucker's performing on Fallon and, and, yeah. and Kimmel. What the fuck, right? And now mm -hmm. I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? Right, and I don't understand the shit. And it's not the validation because you're gonna do the work right. anyway. You right. know what I'm saying? But it's, it, yeah, it is I the don't question. Like, what? Who the fuck is standing? Who's standing there saying he can't come on? You feel me? It feels like that. It really right. do. That's the only time I ever said, you know, what's going on here, right? And that's something I've been I've been fighting for, right? And even the you know the people that are in power, you know, that I know that work on behalf of me. They out there trying to make the shit happen, and they facing a little bit of walls. Like they can't get through, and and, and you know what I mean? It's right. Like, what the fuck? And bro, you got yeah. some of the best features, the best assist leaders, Grammy nominate. I mean, you don't. Know <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, that's man. the only time. Apart from that, though, I always take accountability. I'm not the nigga sitting there saying, you know. I need to be talked about amongst the community and niggas need to respect my yeah. name. I don't give a fuck about that, right? I, like, if you're not, a lot of people ask me, like, you feel like you're overrated or underrated, my bad. Right. Do you feel like you're underrated? Do you feel like you don't get the respect that you deserve? And I say, if I, if I am underrated and if I don't get the respect that I deserve, then that's my fault. That's nobody else's fault but mine. Because, How so, though? Because there's nobody standing there saying there's not a collective of people in the, you know, because now you're talking about fans, right? Now you're talking about, because those are the people that rate you, right? right. The fans, right? They they rate you. They put you in, you know, when you, the big three, when we talk about Kendrick, Cole, and Drake, and you know, the oh, big Oh, I don't three. know. Do we still have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll talk about that later. But that's what right. they call them the big three, 
right? Kendrick, Cole, Drake. But if they're the big three, who's calling them the big three? The fans are calling them the big three, right? Who's mm -hmm. calling them the big three? Fans, okay. fans are saying these are the big three. These are the big three biggest, nicest, dopest artists in the world, right? Mm -hmm. They put them on that pedestal, right? Nobody controls that but the people. So if the people aren't saying Jorner's in that conversation or Jorner's not, or you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my fault, though. That means I got to work harder. That means I got to I gotta level up. That I means see, I got to get that respect. I can see what you're saying, too. But also, sometimes it becomes familiar and the name you know. Not disrespecting or taking anything away from somebody else. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it becomes familiar where I'll say something, and then, oh, yeah, you'll say something. And then you'll say something. Right. You know what I'm saying? And not that that's what the big three is, but in a sense, when people say, oh, you're, you're, you're top, I see people all the time, and that's where they'll go to because it's familiar and you heard it somewhere I else. I think the era in, that we're in right now has placed Kendrick, right. Cole, and Drake in the big three. And they should because be. Because before Kendrick, Cole, and Drake, it was Nas, Jay-Z, Jay. And who, Eminem or something M. like that, right? And one, Before yep. that, it was Big, yep. Tupac, you know, and who else was, was, you know. But the point is, that was the big three. Right. 50, you know, whatever, like that was the big three. And then now you have, now, those are the, the big three of our generation, of this generation right. would be those guys, right? Because those are the biggest artists in the world, right? And hip-hop artists of the world. And respectfully, you know, they put out a, a massive amounts of albums, right? They've have massive amounts of success. They're really good, mm -hmm. right? So if they're the big three, then they deserve that, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, that's who the fans are saying is the big three. If Joyner is not the big three, Joyner is okay with that. I'm right. not mad at that. I'm right. not the big three. I'm not mad that I'm not the big 10. Do your friends- I don't care, to, right? <laughs> are your fans and your following upset? Nah, well, okay. they, what they do, though, is when that conversation is mentioned, you know, your, your fans are going to step in and be like, wait, nah, Jordan should be, right? And that's and that's their opinion, right? And it's all subjective. Everybody has an opinion of who's the greatest and who's the best and who, that's all opinions. All I'm saying is I hold myself accountable for where gotcha. I am not. Gotcha. Except when it comes to the TV <laughs> right. shit. I can't yeah. understand that shit. I don't yeah. understand that. That's, that's, that should be an easy layup. But apart from that, just in the world, right? It's like when we're talking music or we're talking accolades or we're talking talent or we're talking whatever. I'm not, I don't know. I don't think there's people or there's a gatekeeper that's controlling who is named the best, you know, right, this right. or the best that. I think that's up for the people to decide. So when they, they ask me if I feel like I'm underrated or if I feel like I get looked over or like if I feel like I'm not in the big conversations, that's my fault. It's like, baby, I need to work harder so that I can become in those conversations hey, and I can go crazy. You know what Joyner, I mean? Joiner, you're yeah. different than me because I point fingers, homie. <laughs> yeah, but you, I, I can't I take do that it all, all the time. I take it off of me. And, and I'm hearing what yeah. you're saying yeah. and, 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 and definitely you're saying it, so I'll take it. But I do feel, yeah. and this is me, I do feel that you're underrated. I do feel like sometimes you'll drop something like, and we got to think, bro, we're talking over, like, like I'm telling you, but we're talking over a decade. Mm -hmm. So there's somebody that's listening right now mm -hmm. that have to go back and listen because I trip off of, do you ever think, man, if you like this, you don't understand what you missed. Yeah, yeah. I think about that sometimes. <laughs> you know they're going to go saying? do their own little yeah. research and, and, and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the album right now, man, not now I'm busy. What does that title mean to Joyner Lucas? So, um, I got I probably got that question millions of times. Yeah. I had to, uh, not now I'm busy. Um, is the place that I am in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like you know you reach a certain amount of success, and then you know you're doing a lot, and you're trying to um, balance mm -hmm. time between your kids. Yeah. You're trying to balance time between your family. You're trying. To, you know, you're trying to balance all this time. You don't have any time to yourself. And you feel like you're just one man and you feel the stress and the pressure and the weight of the world. And, like, you know, you just feel like you you, you start to say that all the time. Like, yo, nah, I'm busy now, nah, nah, nah. nah, I'm busy now. Nah. And it just kind of became the theme. But also, there's a double meaning, you know, so that if you listen to the album, there's really a story to it, you know, and to where 
um, I talked about how, you know, I was too busy to see the truth and I was too busy to face myself because when I reached a, you know, a certain level of success, um, that was the first time in my life that I ever, you know, didn't have to be in survival mode, right? Mm -hmm. And now I can kind of chill for a second and, you know, really just like, find who I was as a person, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then what I discovered w was a lot of deep-rooted traumas that I have inside of me, you know what I'm saying? And um, rather than face those things, right, rather than go to therapy and rather than do these things, which I still haven't been to therapy and I don't plan on going to therapy for a long time, I don't want to open that door. Right. I don't want to open the therapy door, right? I don't know how I'm going to handle that because yeah. there's a lot on the other side, on the of, other that, side of that you know? door. You know what I mean? And, and it's your it's your timing too though. A hundred percent. I don't want a lot of people say you can go to therapy and you should you know I don't want to, right? I I'm afraid of therapy. I'm afraid of it. Like, I'm afraid of what you know, what's gonna happen when that door opens. Mm -hmm. Because right now everything is stuffed in the closet. All my pain, my trauma, my hurt, my all of it gets put in the closet. Right, and then I shut that closet, and then when I hurt and and I go through traumas and I go through life shit, and I'm I just stuff it all in the closet. But you recognize it. Though. I recognize that that's going to, and when I put it in the closet, I say to myself, I'm gonna to have to address that shit one day. But yeah, I'm doing that shit right now. Yeah, <laughs> I addressed mine about two years ago. Yeah, and and you know we 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 we're everything yeah. to everybody. You yeah. know we're Superman to our kids. We yeah. you know you got a fan base that you take care of. Sometimes the the last person we really take care of uh, is us. Yeah. And you got to think, man, I'm older than you are. Mm -hmm. And I just started addressing things two years ago, but I was the same way. Like at one point I knew I wasn't ready. Yeah. And then when I became somewhat ready, I was ready to accept it. Right. And then the, that's when that work really began. Right. And I thought I had questions before. Man. Yeah, questions you open there. up that closet, you're yeah. like, oh, I'm man. not trying to open up that, bro. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever going to do that. You like, will. To be honest with you, I, I might be 50 but years old. But what is the music to that. you, though? It, you is the music kind of therapy for you as well? The music is definitely therapy yeah. for me. Like, if I didn't have that outlet, then I don't know what I would do, right? But, you know, I'm, I really don't want to open up that door. So, mm -hmm. like, rather than when I say that, you know, I'm too busy to face myself, it's like, I realize that all of these traumas and all of these things that I've been through has now shaped and shifted me into a new person. And that mm. new person isn't necessarily the greatest person. Right. You know, that person has a lot of deep wounded traumas and that person, you know, just isn't the same person anymore. You know, and it's like I had to kill my old self in order to become this new version of myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And even though that new version of myself may not necessarily be the best right you know version it's the of newest. myself it's the newest version yeah, of myself i understand um, and i'm okay with this version of myself you know what i'm saying and that's really what the you know the concept is you know behind the album for sure. mm, this life is a motherfucker huh uh-huh yeah man hey and, and when you sit down and when you do go to write is there more that we haven't heard that you kill on the bush like kill it on the vine like certain songs Certain verses. So, no, so put, put like this. So, storytelling, right, is like my way of giving back, mm -hmm. right? To us or you? Or, or in to, general? To, to you, mm -hmm. right? But it's also therapeutic to me. Mm -hmm. I got an uncle. Shout out to my uncle, Rob. Every Sunday, he goes out and he feeds the homeless people. He makes it a point. He goes, he buys sandwiches. He goes to the market. You know, he spends his own money. And he feeds the home. He goes down, you know, no matter how cold it is, if it's snowing, if it's raining. And he makes it a point to feed the homeless people, right? And I ask him why he does that. Why do you take your own money? Why do you do that? And he's like, it just feels good, right? I feel like I'm giving back. I feel like, you know, I'm doing my part, right? And it might not be it may not be nothing crazy, but if he's taking his little hundred dollars and he's buying sandwiches and he's wrapping them up and you know, he's and they all come to the to the tent and to the table he has set up downtown, it should be just him and he just feed the homeless, right? And I say, Why you do that? And he goes, This is my way of giving back. This is what God's telling me to do. So when I create these storytelling records, as you can see, this is 
you know, some of it is is about suicide, you know. Mm-hmm. Some of it is about uh, substance abuse, mm-hmm. you know. Um, some of it is about racism, you know. I've touched on many different stuff. Some of it is about, you know, drinking and driving, you know. It's like, but the messages are always a positive message, right? It's always a positive outcome at the end of the day. Um, some of them, I couldn't help. But broski, there's no fucking positive. This right. <laughs> that right. shit was, this one that be, was, that was for be me. What it is. That was for me. Right. right. That was, for, but you know what I mean? But almost all of these storytelling records is my way of giving, is, is putting something out into the world that I know is going to help somebody. I don't have to do these records, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people look at it like, oh, this is chasing clout and you, you just trying to go viral. So you did it out. But it's like, no. And my uncle's not outside selling sandwiches because people are, right. you know, he's, he, you know, he's trying to go viral. He does, he's doing it because, you know, he's helping somebody. You know, he's helping somebody eat. And when I'm making these records, you know, I'm, I know that it's helping somebody. Mm-hmm. I know that, the, you know, somebody, you know, watch best for me that was, you know, an addict and they now in recovery because of that record, mm-hmm. you know. And I know that somebody was about to jump off the bridge or hang themselves, but when they watched I'm Sorry, they decided to change their mind. Have you gotten you that know? back many a times? Where someone would come up to you and say, Bro, those, those, uh, that's the core. That's the core. That's, those are the people that buy tickets and they want to see me live and they want to meet me in person and they want to tattoo mm-hmm. my face and my name and right. the scriptures. Of, right? These are things that actually help people. It's different. Right, it heals people, bro. It's not music that's just popping right now and it's gone tomorrow. So when I create these storytelling records, right, when I create a Ross Cappuccione, when I create, you know, any any of the storytelling records that are they're special art pieces that I put out into the world that are meant to, you know, help people at mm-hmm. the end of the day. It's not even for it's me. It's all intentional. A hundred percent. It's not even for me, right? I'm not here to be, it's like God is, you know, channeling, you know, the message through me to get out into the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I know that when that message is delivered to the world, there's healing there. But what people don't know is that the guy on the other side of the pen is not healed. That's what I, that I was going to ask. See what I'm like, saying? where do you get it from? And you don't. I don't. You know, you get some That's from. A sacrifice. Right. I don't. I don't get it. But I don't. Right. What, a, what about when someone comes up to you and they say, you changed my life. You saved my life. Uh, this, you know, I was going through this. That's got to be kind of something for you as well. Do you take yeah, it as I, like a hundred percent? Because of those those people that you got to think about what it took for them to 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 tell me that to be that vulnerable to tell me up, and they they cry in my arms, bro. And they they're vulnerable, you know, and they tell me like, yo. I was about to kill myself, bro. Like I was right there, bro. And my and my brother sent me this video, bro. And I and it changed and saved my life, bro. It's like I, I don't even have those thoughts anymore after watching that shit. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, man. Pause. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> but I do. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Hey man, you know she's gonna make a whole collage out of hey, pause. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the thing is with the pause, you don't never know. It, we could be having the most dead serious yeah, conversation. We were. <laughs> yeah, man. That shit. I bro, thought we were. You I know gotta what I'm light, saying? I got to lighten the mood sometimes with that shit because this shit, the conversations be too heavy, bro. And yeah, I'm just, I, I, we were definitely in the middle of it. In a, in a, in a, in a, shit. In a world, I was like, oh, okay, I guess we just pause you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's like me calling my brother, like, yeah, you know, Aunt Such and Such died. Like, damn, yeah, man. It was all fucked up, man. Like, she just <laughs> fell right over on it. Pause. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, man. Exactly, I, man, right. Look like, at her, man, just laying up in the in that wood. Pause. <laughs> like, man. That shit crazy. But but you know it's a trip, man. You 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 gotta have laughter in the mayhem too, bro. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? You for gotta sure. have laughter in the mayhem, bro. Because if if we don't have a spot where we can detach the spiral and the downward, you know, we yeah. you could stay in whatever feeling that you're having at a mm-hmm. particular moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if and if you don't know how to talk yourself out of it, psych yourself, I mean, even just go for a walk, anything, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, the the the, the heavy is heavy. Mm-hmm. And that's why when, you know, there's times when I'm just like, all right, you know, people listen to me or they hear us do certain things on air and they're like, oh, Big is always so up and up. And I saw this dude yesterday. He was like, man, this is the quietest I've ever seen you. He don't know me, but on air, it's like big boy and everything like mm-hmm. that, right? But then they don't know that I could be the quietest person, not in the room, but the quietest person in the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I overthink everything. 
You know what I'm saying? Not just with me, my kids, my sister, my brother. You know, you 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 carry a lot to come in here and take away. Like if I came in every day and I just talked about mine, you wouldn't want to hear it. Mm. So my gig is for me to take away yours. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why people say, man, I've been listening to you for 20 years. I say, man, I've been talking to you for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You got me through this, but you don't understand what you got me through. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's not always just to give, 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 man. I receive so much back from turning on this microphone. You know what I'm saying? And I know that you got to receive it back, too, when you split a curtain or something open and you hear not the applause or the screams or anything because it's good for your ego, but you hear like, oh, okay, they understand my mission and my work too. for sure and they accept it and that's what it's all about man yeah that's and i'm grateful for that to have you know to be able to reach you know that many people and to be able to touch that many people in the heart and you know a lot of people i mean save a lot of people too yeah, you know what i'm saying and um that's the reason why i do it you know but apart from from that that's just one side of joiner and i feel like i have to get that out right and and that 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 can come sporadically pause it can come on mm -hmm. each different projects it can be singles lucy's or you know but i right. always have to make sure that i got some of those in the chamber because that's my way of, right you know what i'm saying putting something out into the world that's going to help but then Apart from that, you know, you also have the lyrical genre that I like to just get busy on the record, you know. And then you also got the turn up me where I like to create a little bop here and there, you know what And I'm that's saying? life too, though, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. when, when people would say, oh, Tupac is contra he's a contradiction, he contradicts himself. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, there's some days that we dear mama. 100%. And there's some days where we like, fuck the world. We and fuck then, the yeah. world. There's some days where it's like, you know, I, you, you, Brendan's got a baby. Yeah, you want to help man. somebody get through something that yeah. you got to keep your head up. And then in the same token, you got, you wonder why they call you bitch. Right, yes. so it's not that he's a hypocrite. It's just that these are the different phases and the emotions that that Tupac is going through as a person, and it's that's that's deep right there, Pause, yeah. because <laughs> just, nah, because that's why I love Pac. It's like because he was very, he was, you know, um, very vulnerable to his yeah. emotions, and he was just and he let it all out. People would say, how could yeah. he do that? I was like, how could he not do that? How could he not do Brenda's Got a Baby? How how could he not but do But these but the again, these are the artists that I grew up on. Right. So when you watch, what do you feel when you when you see I'm not mad at you? Mm-hmm. Right? That feeling that you get when you watch that video is a feeling that it made me feel something. Pause. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, <sure. laughs> hey, nah, because it takes a special type of creative to create something that can make you like, like wow, right? Mm -hmm. It makes you start thinking about just like, and it's like because of Pac, when I mean, Brenda's got a baby, and I'm not mad at you, and all these. Right? That's what inspires me, right? That's what makes me like, damn, this dude's pen, the storytelling shit, like that's storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like. That makes you feel something. And it's like those records inspired me. Stand by Eminem. Yes, sir. You know, records like that. A lot of almost slick Rick shit. Like mm -hmm. all of that inspires me. The storytelling shit, the early shit. So Pac, I'm happy you named him because he's definitely like a really yeah, one man. of my biggest influences for sure. Hey man, and visually, it, do you go into when you do a video as opposed to always just kind of rapping in front of the camera? Are you extreme? And, and I, I know the answer to this, but you're extremely aware of what concept of a visual that you want, yeah. even if it's so-called not popular. Yeah, because, and I tend to touch on subjects that people don't talk about. Yeah. Right? Hey, man, I remember when I saw that I'm not racist, mm -hmm. at first I was like, what am I watching? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you see the art of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you're like, oh, okay. But it ends with healing. Yeah. Right? But then it ends with the hug. It didn't have to end like that. Mm -hmm. Could have ended with a fight. That's true, right? But then, what would that? What message would that would have brought, right? Like, so when you end it with the hug, which a lot of people didn't like, by the way, you know, a lot of the backlash that I got from that record, right. you know, was like people didn't like the hug. Like they yeah. should have whooped. He should have yeah, whooped on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they, you know, but it's like that's not that's not you know that's not the healing or the message that I wanted to put out into the world. That's not what God wanted me to do. God didn't want me to end it like that. You know, God wanted me to end it that way, right? And it's like, um, 
it's because of records like that, you know, I actually had a vision in my head. You know, when before I even created the song, I seen the characters, right? I seen the room. I seen the guy. I seen the Trump hat. I seen the guy. I knew exactly who I needed to play that role. I knew exactly. And Damn. it's like, I seen these things, right? And then now when I start writing to it, it's almost like I'm writing a soundtrack to the movie that's already created. So the music videos are actually the easiest part because there's, the storyline right. is the song. You're like, I got it already. I already know what we're doing. I edit those music videos in an hour and a half tops. Damn. I know where everything goes. I know where that scene goes. I know where this goes. I know where the camera's got to be moved to. I know, as I know exactly what need when we're shooting it. I know where the where what angle the camera needs to be faced. Where it needs to be at. What I know. That's what I mean by mm-hmm. when even not in your presence. When I say you work harder mm-hmm. than and not that then you you then you need to, but mm-hmm. then others. Like there's times, man, when we were just talking with uh, Ty Dolla Sign and Ye, right? And I've said this about Ty Dolla Sign many a times. Ty is one of those people where people don't understand how, how talented he is. Ty is my brother. Shout out to Ty <laughs> Dolla Sign. Where this dude to get an orchestra, this, you know what the I'm guitar, saying? Plays the drums. Pick up any and everything. And then you listen to it and you just like, oh, okay. You know, but you don't You don't really know the extent of how talented he what, actually was. What what how it came together. And that's the same way I think too with you, Jordan. I hear lyrics and I'm just like But that's but again, if people don't know that, right. that's Ty's fault. Mm. That's his fault. He needs to somehow show that more. He needs to do a music video where he goes right. and first thing he does is put the guitar around his neck while playing the drums at the same. Like, he needs to show, right, motherfucker, right. I do all of this, right? He's not showing that in the music videos, right? So we can't blame nobody for that but Ty. And that's the same way I hold myself accountable for, for me being underrated or whatever. It's like, I can't. There's nobody saying, you know, we're going to make it so that Jordan Lucas is, you know, not popping. It's like... Mm-hmm. We're going to make it so Ty Dolla Sign doesn't, you know, peep, nobody knows that he right. plays these instruments, right? right? It's like, no, you have to show people that you play these instruments, right? Mm-hmm. And it's people that do. Bruno Mars, you know, or my man Anderson Pack. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, he makes it. He he shows people, <laughs> yeah. motherfucker, I play all these instruments. I do all of these things. He's on the drums. He's right. on the key. He's doing... Ty doesn't do that a lot in his music videos. You know what right. I'm saying? So he needs to do that shit because I feel like people... Don't know that about him And it's like Once you find out I found out in the studio With right. the nigga I found out Like I started doing my research On this nigga I'm like yeah. bro Like You know what I'm saying Like this nigga's Crazy talent Like I knew right. Just yeah. from the bloodline With his pops being in Lakeside Even that I knew from the bloodline And then he had this yeah. documentary Cause I already knew Tiny But I saw yeah. this documentary Yeah And I was like And that's why when I talk I bring it up too Because sometimes People don't tell you What they do you know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's up to somebody else to say, oh, no, he nice. This is what he do. But I understand when you say, man, Michael Jackson, nobody called Michael Jackson the king of pop till he said, I'm the king of pop. Yeah, but even as far as the king of dancing, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody, Mike never said, I'm the king of dancing. He showed you why he was right, the king of dancing. Right. He's, he did the move walk. He showed you. it. You seen it. You know, you got to really experience Michael like, doing all of these things and it really made you like oh shit this nigga does all of that right and this is what I mean by like you know even Chris Brown super talented Mm -hmm. dude bro he does everything but he you can see Chris dancing you can see him doing these things he shows you every single part of him you know that he you know can break dance and nigga you know he does flips and shit like he's very acrobatic like he's very like these are things about he raps he'll show you the rap inside he'll show you all these different sides of him right right and and that's what i mean when we talk about dollar sign it's like bro we don't know that you do all these things like that like the people don't you have a really great voice his voice is fucking amazing he can he he be making hits he's a hit maker right but it's like does everybody know ty plays the drums no We should, though. Everyone should know that shit, right? Do we know that he's a beast on the guitar? If you go to his live shows, he put the guitar around his neck, right? But unless you're really at them live shows, you don't know, right? So it's like he has to tap into that. Like, he has to figure out a way to get into that bag to where now everybody knows that he can play all these instruments. Yeah. And he can do all of these things. Yeah, if we we don't know. 
once people know that, you know what I'm saying, then I think people will get to see how great he actually really is. Yeah, because you know I know I mean? we say it, man. We say it, but we yeah. don't know. Hey, not now yeah. I'm busy. Yeah. And we were talking about social media, and we were just talking about sometimes there's outside influences. Mm-hmm. When do you know the album is ready? Because at one point we felt like, oh, it's mm-hmm. coming. It's here. It's here. And it wasn't. Do you know what I'm saying? Was there, was there really outside influences? Yeah, I mean... I think that um, I'm actually a fan of, you know, different types of, you You would be surprised that, you know, I actually, like, I'll listen to Young Boy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I listen to some of these cats and like Kodak Black, like, I love Kodak Black, you know, but because of the type of music that I do, people would be like, what? You right. know, a lot of people might think he's whack, you know, a lot of people may think this nigga whack, but music's subjective, right? So... You know, I'm a fan of a lot of these artists, so, like, I genuinely wanted to work with them, right? But at the same time, you know, I was trying to get in their world, too, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just bringing them to join his world. It was also trying to get in their world, and I think that's the disconnect that happened because I felt like if I was going to do that, then I had to do that with taste. Pause. Mm -hmm. Or I had to do that within reason. Or Or I had to... You know, I had to do it my way, and I don't think that I was doing it my way. Wow. I felt like I was doing it, and they're going into that that direction. Did it feel non-authentic it to you? It felt non-authentic. It started not to feel authentic, right? And as I go back and I listen to the album, you know, and I was just like, damn, this shit don't feel right. Damn. But you caught it, though. I caught it, though, because I'm like, if I drop this shit, I already know what the response is going to be because I don't, I'm don't. i not even happy with this shit, right? Wow. I feel like I'm not being authentic to myself. Because some people, too, join it. Mm. Oh, just put it out. Just put it nah, out. Nah, fuck yeah. that. It's going to live forever. Right. And yeah, my, kid, my son's so. going to grow up and be like, yo, Pops, like, I love your music, but what the fuck was that? Like, why you why you did that, right? And it's yeah, like, I don't man. want... You feel me? Like, like even yeah. with, uh, yeah. with Cole, when he had that kind of like, I disappointed Nas... <laughs> you, what you know, said he let Nas down. I let Nas down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and and Nas was, and then when Nas came back, Nah, brother, you didn't. That was amazing. But, but that was a feeling of like, damn. You that know what I'm saying? Like amazing. I you, chased it when I knew I shouldn't have. A lot of people felt like that about that record. I didn't feel that way. I thought that record was hard. Yeah, man. Right. But uh, but if you were like a a fan of Cole and you were there, through and the that's whole what come you were protecting too, like, right? And it's like you did that, then it's like the shit went crazy. But he didn't feel like he was being authentic to himself, right? Right? And it's like he when he when he made Nas down, which was an amazing record, by the way. But for Nas to hop on that record, yes, on the record, right? Right? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> for Nas to hop on the record. Pause. Pause. He didn't. Um, he, the response was fire. And it yeah, was like man. that. That was a, re- a, a dope moment in hip hop. Hey, man. And you yeah. saying you grew up and, or, you know, you, you yeah. looked at Stan video with Eminem. Yeah. And then to be in a position where it's like, man, like Eminem, he says your name. You know what I'm saying? But when you, you got to be kind of a checker or a fan first yeah. before you actually get into, you know, that's Eminem. Yeah. And now you share a record, Grammy 9 with it, whatever yeah, it may yeah. be. What was that like when you knew, like, I got an authentic, a real Eminem? Man, it almost felt like you growing up watching Jordan play your mm-hmm. whole life. And you, everybody knew that Jordan was, you know, the guy, right? And it's like, you know, you're young, you know, you're learning how to ball up a little bit and you're like, you know, this is your passion and you say you really want to be in the league and you may, but the one guy is posted on your wall, Jordan, 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 you know, this is your guy, right? And then, you know, you end up growing up and you ended up getting to the league and then you end up actually getting on a team with Jordan. And it's like, now you play, now you're in a starting five with Jordan right. and now you, you know, it's like, you know, you become the guy, right? And it's like, um, it felt surreal to me. And now I'm on an NBA court and I'm getting the Jordan's, you know, he's the, you know, Jordan's the um, the guy on the team. And, and you know, just me being on the same court as right. Jordan, I'm just like, damn, that's how I felt like when I was shooting a video with Marshall, you know, and I was like in person with him and I'm just like, yo, this is the nigga. I, yeah. This is like, you know, one of the first albums I had from this nigga. Like, this is one of my biggest influences. Like, this is the nigga. And I'm sitting here you know what I'm saying? Like shooting a whole music video with this motherfucker. Yeah. This is just me and him on this record. Like this is, the you feel me? And it's like, 
it was just surreal. And you like, man, I know I'm getting Kimmel. And I know I'm getting Fallon. I on know this I'm one. getting like, Kimmel. This is it. I know I'm getting Fallon. Yeah. I know I'm getting Ellen or whatever right. the fuck was popping at the time. <laughs> yeah. Oprah, this yeah. is going this in. Is, this is the one. Nope. Yeah, that that tuition into the school of experience is a motherfucker Bro, too, though. It's like, nope. All right, well, maybe this shit a little, maybe this record's a little bit too hard. Let me right. do something soft shit. Let me do a record with Will Smith. Right, right. <laughs> nope. But Will Smith was <laughs> Will Smith was a record of love too. You know what I'm saying? That was another. That was another joint. That was just. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, Kobe passed away, and I always wanted to make a song about Will. But when Kobe passed, it was like, damn. Like, imagine if that. You know, was well, that would have crushed me. You know, right. I died, never got to tell, you know, Will how I, you know, how I felt about him. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that record was born. And then that's authentic too, man, because that that not only puts you in the video in the room, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? That that brings Will to where Will is like, because to me, Will always been nice with the mic for sure. You know what I'm saying? And that Pause, I think, yeah, that, yeah I <laughs> yeah, think that yeah. put a little fire in him too. Yeah. To like, like, man. Yeah, to want to get back. He started yeah, recording after that, and he started going. Yeah. He started going. That gave him a little, you know, his little one-two step back. You Hell know what yeah. I mean? Hell yeah. It works, man. We were talking about the big three with Kendrick, Drake, Cole. Mm -hmm. And now we got all that. Do you know what I'm saying? With Future Metro booming. Are those kind of records, you know, good for, for, the, for the genre, for the game? Like, does, does, does it shake it up a little bit? I feel like it does shake it up a little bit. Right. You know, it's a competitive game, it's a competitive sport. I think everybody's all powwow with everybody, and everybody's all giddy and happy, and everybody's giving everybody their flowers, which kumbaya. is amazing. Yeah. Everything's all kumbaya, but I feel like it's excitement to get people excited sometimes. People want to see the competitive nature. People want to see niggas going back and forth. You know what I'm right. saying? And, you know, a, a lot of hip-hop, well, hip-hop is, that's really what it was for yeah. a long time. You know, you had motherfuckers dissing each other and that shit made it exciting. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, when it stops getting excited and everything is all fucking, then the shit just becomes kind of, you know what I mean? Boring and shit. Why did you never get mad, or publicly, for what I understand, get mad at hip-hop? What do you mean? Like, like when you say, "Man, I didn't get, I didn't get this look," and not, not like, "Oh, I didn't get," but you know, like, and 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 once again, I felt like you put a lot in and you put a lot in the game. Mm -hmm. And when we say, "Oh, shake up," you, I've never really heard you come and say, "Well, this, 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 this is over here," and this, and this mother, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've never heard you pull down to get up. Yeah, because I feel like then that's just really me not taking accountability, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I think taking accountability for your own fault, it's like if I spend time trying to blame other people right. for where I'm not, you know, then how could I ever get to where I need to go if I'm unable to see the reason is because of that is, you know, and the reason why I know that is because, you know, before I actually got in the game, you know, I'm like, yo, why can't I break in the fucking industry? It was the same thing with the TV shit. It was like, what is that? Why can't I break? Right? I was already making fire ass records, but it just weren't cutting through because nobody knew who the fuck I was. Mm -hmm. So now the point, now the key is, how do I get people to know who I am? You know? And it's like, if I just sat there and just blamed everybody, then I right. wouldn't even be where I'm at. I would have gave up and would have been like, you right. know what, man, fuck this shit. I'm nice and nobody recognizes it and, you know, whatever. Then I guess I'm, fuck this shit. Fuck it, right. Pop. Yeah, right? that's like, what I was yo, saying. Like, how you never get mad shit. at it? Nah, because it's like, bro, like, that, you can't never elevate if you if you just get, what does that do? Right. right? What is getting mad and then blaming And everybody? to tell you the truth, it's yeah. easy. It's easy to say fuck it. Right. You know, it, it, I yeah. think that it's harder to say, oh, it's me, or what do I do? Let right. me stay with it. Right. Let me, you know what I'm saying? Because how do you per perfect a craft that I feel is already perfect? You gotta, you gotta fall, you gotta fall down a million times, bro. And right. then, you know, before you really learn how not to fall again. You know what I mean? It's like, and I'm, I'm I've experienced falling so many times, right? And it's like, it's I'm comfortable falling, right? And it's like I'm cool, like mm -hmm. it's like. You know, I'm on the floor sometimes, and I'm fine with that. It's like cool, you know. When but when I get back up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when I get up, <laughs> pause. Niggas is gonna see what time it is. But it's like I'm not mad at nobody. I gotta get my legs straight so I don't fall. Nigga, it's my own fucking fault. Right, I'm right, falling. Right, right, I'm bow legged right, and shit. Yeah. Pause. So I'm like, nigga, I'm, why the fuck? Why I'm gonna be mad at you because I'm falling? Right. Unless you trip me. Do right, I feel right. like niggas is out here tripping me? 
Nah. Boom. Understood. But it. with the motherfucking TV shit, niggas is out here tripping me. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody's tripping me because it's like, nigga, what the fuck? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But apart from that, I don't feel like nobody's tripping me. I feel like I'm fucking falling over myself because I don't know how to walk straight, bro. And it's like, I got to figure out how to fucking get, you know, I, I need to figure out how to move. Damn. And once you figure that shit out, you know, then you don't fall no more. And then now the next motherfucker's coming up. You could teach them how not to fall. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And and that's all it really is. It's accountability. Hey Amen. And and even with just with the new body of work too, bro. When you say I had to go back in, I had to rework it myself. I knew I could it wasn't authentic to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people wouldn't take the accountability. And I and, and, and it's, it's crazy. Accountability, bro. I still argue you, but but you know, but if you're saying this is why I yeah one big I, but I, you also have to remember the big three. Mm-hmm. They've been in the game eight years before I got into the game, right? Like they have, they got eight nine bodies of work, right? They got nine ten projects and albums and shit. Like these people, I'm only on my second album, bro. right? Like I'm new. Right, I'm still considered new. Right, right. I don't. But you're have, veteran and relevant at the same time. At too. the same time, but mm-hmm. at this, but I think right. Um, people are just kind of getting hit. Right, I'm just, I'm still establishing myself. Right, it's so, our first sit down. It's our first sit down. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like because of that, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively a new artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm on my second album. Do you yeah. treat it as such? Yeah. 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 I mean, I know I've been, I've been doing my thing for a long, long time, but it's like I don't. Again, it's just playing ball in the street versus being in the NBA, two different things, right? Gotcha. So I've been, I've been street balling my whole life, but then like I just got, I've been in the league for about four or five years. So now it's like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We absolutely love your music videos. And anytime you drop one, we're always like, what is it going to look like? Yeah, man. But what has been the hardest music video that you had to create? And do you also have a favorite? <sighs> the hardest one that I had to create. Say it. Hmm. Will, Ooh. Will was probably one of the difficult ones because you gotta remember, right? I'm going, um, I'm going through all these transformations. I'm mm-hmm. cutting my hair on my face, like I'm trying to get into every single character that he's ever played, you know. Mm. And um, it's in order, mm. you know. The 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 um, from the movies, mm-hmm. they're all the TV show, everything's all in Damn. order, right? So it's like I had to. That was very meticulous. That, how we had to shoot and that. And you paid that much attention to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you made sure, and, and it's crazy because even nowadays as we sit here, you missed AI by a year. Mm-hmm. You know, where mm-hmm. <laughs> where it could have yeah. been yeah, like, oh, we can been. AI some yeah, of that. Yeah, or we yeah, can, you know what I'm saying? Deep yeah. Yeah. Deep even fake. deep fake mm-hmm. wasn't perfected. Yeah. It was new. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? New. But but yeah, but that, but that's just another thing where you where we were talking about what you put into the craft of it. Mm-hmm. Because you could have just really threw on a Fresh Prince outfit, and we we would have figured certain things out. Right. But to go to extra layer yeah. and do the things, man. Like, and it's like, between that one... Um, did you get flack for Devil's Work? I didn't really... I didn't get as much flack as I, as I got love for that Okay, video. gotcha, gotcha. I got a lot of love came from that video. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Because um, it came from a genuine place. You gotcha. Know what I'm um, but Devil's Work was easy. It was an easy video to shoot. It was video was easy. Was Devil's Work in the church? Yeah. I was wondering if that was the thing, you know, because because people nowadays, mm-hmm. man, everybody want to be mad. Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody got everybody got a voice anyway, and everybody want to be mad because nobody knows how to be accountable, bro. Mm-hmm. Like people just get mad at shit, but I mean, a lot of the shit that people be mad about is their own fault. Mm. But nobody knows how. Nobody knows how to take accountability. You know how hard it is to take accountability. Like hell yeah, I do. Like you know how difficult it is. That's why that. I keep arguing against you. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's difficult to really to really take accountability. Yeah. To really be like, damn, I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I got a a a, a bitch ass father that you know is goddamn sixty years old, and this nigga still don't know how to take accountability. You still can't look at himself and say, wow, damn, I fucked up. That's some of the shit in the closet, too? That's some, like that's as far, some yeah. shit in the closet, 100%. Yeah, man. But I got, an, I, I, got an, I got a lot of relatives. I got a lot of people that did some fuck shit. But a lot of the problem is a lot of motherfuckers, they don't want to admit when right. they fucked up. You know how hard it is to tell them Right. Sometimes we'd rather stay away. 
you know how hard it is to tell a motherfucker I'm sorry? Mm. Like, to really think about yourself and your actions and, like, what you didn't do right and what you could have did better and really say, I apologize for how I, you know, what I did or how I treated you. That's the hardest shit for somebody to do. Can you do that? I've been doing it the whole fucking show. No, I'm talking about how long did it take you <laughs> to, to learn do how yeah. to take accountability? Yeah, man. Man. I'm a very self aware person, mm. you know? And I think that with age, and when you. But then again, right. it's not even just age. Yeah, because I just got done. Exactly. This yeah. motherfucker's 60 years old. It's at I your just, time, I too. I just though. think it's. I just don't think everybody's capable of that. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't know if everybody's capable of that. But Some you know people, you are. I'm capable of that. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you have to, you know, you have to be extremely vulnerable to be able to do that. A lot of people think that, you know, apologizing makes you weak. You know, a lot of people think that if you admit that you fucked up, then, you know, it just makes you weak, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. That's some of the strongest stuff we can do. Like even with my wife, yeah. you know, there's there's just conversation. Right. And you know, sometimes as a man or as a human being, mm-hmm. you wanna be right, you wanna shut down. Right. But if you just say, Yeah, yep, nah, I was wrong there. Right. Well, I understand. Right. I hear you. But just because you apologize doesn't mean that I'm gonna forgive you. Right. You know, a lot of people have this thing where they, you know, forgive this person for you. Right. Do it for you. Uh, Don't do it for them. Right. You gotta forgive. You gotta open your mouth. Exactly Fuck all that about. shit. Yeah. Fuck all that shit. Fuck all the forgive. Open your heart. You know, the, you know. Release yourself. Release your, fuck uh. all that. <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> fuck the forgiveness shit. Fuck right. being friends and fuck being fuck you, right? Yeah. That's where I'm at. I can now. live without you. That's where I'm at with the shit now. Easy fuck call. all of the, you know, let's forgive and let's be, be friends and we're gonna, you know, talk at some point. Fuck you. In in and I appreciate your apology or whatever the fuck you just right. gave to me or whatever. Thank you for that. I hear but that. But you're still a piece of shit, right? And fuck you. And I don't right. have no plans of making it. It never be the same. You. It would never be the same. We're not gonna make amends. We're not gonna be friends. We're not hanging out. I don't wanna go to your house. You're not coming to mine. Right. You're not gonna meet my kids. You're not gonna hang out. Absolutely not. Fuck you, right? And that's where I'm at. Right. Right. <laughs> and I'm happy being that way. I don't give a fuck about that. Maybe when I get some therapy or some shit and you know, but I'm I'm you pushing like, you like but right, now? Or you say, <laughs> right now. Even when I get therapy, yeah. right? I'm just gonna be like, listen, thank you for helping me with the revelation and everything about myself and you know, all of the healing and the trauma. Mm, but, but it's, it's still, still fuck you. <laughs> well, we're not doing the forgiveness shit. We're not doing all that. Cause I just think that some people have gone too far. Right. Right? And when right. you go too far, there is no, there's a line, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And once you cross that fucking line, then there's no coming back from that. I don't give a fuck. About it. Sometimes you can bro, come back. I from overstand that. what you're saying. 100%. Ani, Joanna Lucas. I love your song Isis with Logic, but uh-huh. I am so curious like how that came about because that's one of my favorite songs, the way you two transition with each other. And you talk about having ADHD, which I feel like a lot of us have, right, including right. me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that record actually, when I created Isis, Marshall was supposed to get on Isis. That was a record that was intended for Eminem to get on, for sure. Um, but he was working on his album at the time, and he, you know, couldn't commit to get. I, it was in. He was sitting in his email for months, and he mm-hmm. couldn't get to it. And I didn't want to bother him with it as much. So when I ended up piecing it up with Logic, you know, who's also a great friend of mine mm-hmm. now. Yeah. But that's because I took accountability. Damn. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, that's sir. because I was able to like. Oh. look inside myself and realize where I fucked up at. Just And that's just due to me going through life and then seeing a lot of the things I was accusing him of, people were now doing to me. Tyrese wrote a book called, mm-hmm. it's paraphrased, but it's like learning how to get out your own way. And you got out of your own way. And then he asked me what I was working He played me some records he was working on. We talked about the industry for a while. Mm-hmm. Asked me to play him some records I was working on. I played him Isis. Nigga went crazy in the studio. And I was like, you want to get on this shit? Pause. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, hell yeah. He was like, nobody's getting it. I was like, I'm supposed to get on it, but fucking he ain't. He was like, Pfft. and then he just went to work. Right then? As soon as. No, so he goes, look, I'm going I'm to go crazy on this shit. And I said, look, when we shooting the video, though, let's get the video shot. He was like, shit, I'm, I'm free in like psh, two weeks. He gave me the day. 
I said, say less. So I already was planning a music video while he was, he ain't even finished the fucking song. Yet. Yeah, you, <laughs> you don't finish. I'm like, you're yo, let's rain get this man shit. And shit like that. That's just how my brain worked, though. You feel me? My Hell brain yeah. worked like that. Like, nigga, Creative I'm, process. I'm quick with the shit. Song done, music video, we out of here. Same shit with Chris Brown, all these niggas. That's just how we work. You feel me? So once the shit was done, you know, we went, we shot the video in LA or some shit. I don't know where the fuck we was at, but we shot it and the shit came out. And the shit went crazy, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, me and him have a really, you know, great, you know, friendship, relationship yeah. at this point, you know, shout That's out to That's crazy, Logic. man, yeah. because if you would have yeah. kept the so-called chip on your shoulder and didn't accept the accountability. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that probably made not only yeah. made him... Like damn, that's that's the realest apology I ever had. Yeah, that probably made you, you know, that's that got to be a little tension off the shoulders too, especially yeah. when we trip off of something and we're not quite sure what we yeah. why we tripping, but Again, we know we tripping. People, there's some motherfuckers that there's a, you know, that cross the line and it's just like a fuck you for life, right? Like, and there's some people that didn't really do anything wrong, right? And there's people that did a little something to you and it might not have been that serious and it's like you could, you know, what I mean, on a on a. Would you had taken the call? If he had called me, yeah, at like that if time. if if everything was reversed, somebody was so called on your neck and on your head, and you oh somebody was on my because neck you you fuck you forever yeah. on yeah, some yeah, things, yeah, 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 for sure. But um, yeah, I would, okay. I definitely would have taken a call for sure if if I if I was right, him. yeah, because you did say you will accept the apology or you will listen. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I would listen, but you ain't gonna shoot the videos. And but probably... I'm not, no, no, no. But it's but again in that situation, mm -hmm. right. That's like some competitive rap shit where I was taking shots right. at the nigga. We didn't really have a relationship to where lines were crossed. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you personally. You did right. some fuck shit. And then now it's like, that's different. You know what I'm gotcha, saying? This gotcha. is like, we don't even fucking know each other. You know, I'm taking shots at you and shit because I'm really... Yeah, like you shooting in the dark. I'm shooting in the dark at you <laughs> yeah. because you the lowest hanging fruit and you popping. And it's like, nigga, I don't like you because I feel like you stole my shit. And I feel like... You know what I'm saying? Your manager set this shit up and I feel like, you know, you, you know, just a bunch of bullshit, right? right? Things that he didn't even do that I made myself believe that right. he did because I'm fucking crazy like that, right? But then at the same time, you start to really realize when you go through shit that you just like, damn, nigga, that motherfucker ain't even do nothing. Right. But now I got to circle the block and be like, hold up. I owe this motherfucking apology, though. I'm not just going to just keep, oh, well, right. I'm wrong, but fuck him. Yeah, you're not gonna going to just drop it nah, and just let that shit. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, because he didn't deserve that shit. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like, nigga, he didn't do shit. You know what gotcha. I mean? And that was a big thing. I was on the motherfucking, the um, Everyday Struggle podcast with Joe Buttons talking crazy shit about that nigga. <laughs> I went on his motherfucking <laughs> campaigns. Like, I was going crazy but, on But you know, thing. Joe, Joe, he, he there for the shit yeah, too, though. Yeah, he don't fuck with logic, right? <laughs> <laughs> he don't fuck with logic, but Easy uh, again, call. it's like, I went on campaigns, like, smearing yeah. this nigga. Now, on I was purpose. doing a lot of shit on purpose, right? Yeah. And it was like, shit, fuck that nigga, right? But he didn't deserve that shit. So Dang. it's like when I, you know, when I when I started to learn certain shit and I came back and I'm like, yo, I fucked up. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? It takes a, a lot for, some, you know, it's a special type of nigga to do, to admit. Accountability. A hundred percent. There it is. And well, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you for man. coming into the neighborhood, man. Like I said, we've been we've been waiting Thank on this you. one, bro. Yeah, sure. And God willing, Thank we'll you. see you again. Absolutely. There it is. Joining Lucas in the neighborhood, Big Boys Big Neighborhood. Boy.